November the 20th, 2017. I want to talk about two things that tie directly into the video last night about the 7.0 earthquake and the Earth slowing into a magnetic pole shift. Now, you've got to think of the Earth as a dynamo. And when you're in a solar minimum, there's not as much energy bit being fed into the positive and negative end into the motor or the dynamo, or in this case, our planet, the north and south magnetic poles. So as we're going through a solar minimum, there's less energy, the motor slows down. It's a natural progression that happens. But when it does, you start seeing the increase of the strong quakes. You start hearing these booms from around the world because as the earth slows, and sometimes it's just a millisecond a day, but that's enough to where you've got um, inner core properties such as magma fields, things like that, that have the inertia that keep pushing, even if it's a millisecond, that, over, that offsets the pressure on the plates and causes these quakes, and not only that, magnetic pole shifts. Let's start with these boons that people have been reporting. It says, there are questions and experts and non-experts around the world are asking. It says, in recent weeks, curiously loud mystery booms have not only been heard around the world, but felt shaking buildings and rattling nerves from Alabama to Michigan, Idaho to California, Russia to Denmark. The Alabama boom, which was on Tuesday at 1.39 Central Standard Time, was heard and felt through 11 counties, but an earthquake event has been ruled out, even though it showed up as an earthquake on the uh, quake monitors. Now, the next day, something similar occurred in Idaho. No explanation had been forthcoming from law enforcement officials there. Then last Saturday, much the same thing was reported in Michigan, according to various local newscasts. Still no explanation. WXYZ in Detroit said the reports came in from the towns of Wyandotte, Ecorse, Lincoln Park, and many others. Wyandotte police said the live boom did not originate in the city. Ecorse uh, police also said the officers heard and felt it inside their police station, but they were not able to pinpoint the source of the sound. Southern New Jersey had baffled residents on October 25th when lighting up the 911 call centers. It was also heard and felt in the Philadelphia area. An earthquake again was ruled out. There were speculations about a sonic boom from military aircraft out of the Naval Air Station near the Patuxent River in eastern Maryland. But again, the uh, air bases are reporting no flights in that area, especially no supersonic type flights that would create that boom. They're talking about possible inversion, which happens when a layer of warmer air sits over a layer of cooler air, magnifying the sound of aircraft miles away. Guys, that's not what's happening here. Some reports across the world are showing that, uh, just like in some of the stronger earthquakes, you have these flashes of light before you feel the quake. And you have to understand what's called piezoelectricity. And that's when you grind two crystals together. They even had them in cigarette lighters, things like that. You create a spark. And if you have a highly crystalline-based um, soil or mountains in that area, then as the faults push against each other, you're going to create that light and that spark. And these are being uh, reported along with these loud booms. Now, the reason I say that it has nothing to do with Air Force is because that same day, halfway across the planet in Sydney, Australia's inner west and outer southern suburbs was awakened to extremely loud explosions, leaving some fearing for their lives. According to news reports, savage, bomb-like booms echo through the city as far as 30 miles to the south. Powerful, cracking sounds shook homes and buildings and were joined by bursts of blinding white light, liking to the flash of a speed camera. The sounds had been attributed to a lightning storm. Some are not buying it because there was no lightning seen. Guys, these lights are again, type in Google Piezo Electric, P-I-E-Z-O. And it's simply the light and energy emitted by these crystals grinding together. Similar reports in the last week re were reported in Russia, Denmark, Florida, Louisiana, and Texas. November 8th, 
in Tennessee. Go back to the second, San Diego, the third, Minnesota, the fourth, Bend, Oregon. Think about this. Again, the military is saying there is nothing going on. I want to show you something else. And I think this is what it is. And I think that's why these times that we're in, we're going to see a lot more natural disasters. Now, one of the latest scientific reports coming out is they're they expect an upsurge in big earthquakes predicted for 2018 as the earth rotation slows. Again, the dynamo effect. You decrease the current to an electric motor, both on the north and south poles or the hot in the ground, slows the motor. Now keep in mind, this report came out two days ago. It's not an old report. It came out on November 18th. Scientists have warned there could be a big increase in numbers of devastating earthquakes around the world next year. And we're just a, a month and a half away or less than that. They believe variations in the speed of Earth's rotation could trigger intense seismic activity, particularly in heavily populated tropical regions. That almost is another entire video, but I'm going to touch briefly on it here. And it's called equatorial bulge in the ocean. Guys, did you know that in some places along the equator, the sea level can vary as much as 400 feet higher than it is, say, along the Miami coast? Because as you have the centrifugal force of the earth spinning, it creates that uh, outflow along the equator. That's just physics. So as the earth slows, that equatorial bulge, and they're not talking about it in this article, I just have done videos about it, will start to lessen. The centrifugal force throwing out will decrease as the speed decreases. The current um, sea levels will rise. If it happens to, during a magnetic pole change, we have a vast change in the magnetics of the Earth, you could have very big floods. Again, type in equatorial bulge and look at the oceans. It says, although some fluctuations and rotations are small, changing the length of the day only by a millisecond, that could still implicate or be implicated in the release of vast amounts of underground energy. Again, centrifugal force. you got magma moving underground. It's not going to slow down as quickly as the Earth slows down. The link between Earth's rotation and seismic activity was highlighted last month in a paper by Roger Billum of the University of Colorado in Boulder and Rebecca Bendick of the University of Montana in Missoula. They, they presented at the annual meeting of the Geological Society of America this information. The correlation between Earth's rotation and the earthquake activity is strong and suggests that there's going to be an increase in numbers of intense earthquakes next year. In their study, Billum and Bendick looked at earthquakes of magnitude 7 and greater that has occurred since 1900. Major earthquakes have been well recorded for more than a century, and that gives us a good record to study. They found five periods when there had been a significantly higher earthquakes compared with other times. In these periods, there were between 25 to 30 intense earthquakes a year. The rest of the time, average figures were around 15 major earthquakes a year. The research um, found that correlations between the period of intense seismic activity and other factors and discovered that when the Earth's rotation decreased slightly, it was followed by a period of increased numbers of intense earthquakes. Again, centrifugal force. The rotation of the Earth does change slightly by a millisecond a day sometimes, and that can be measured very accurately by atomic clocks. Now, this is a part about 18 or 2018, excuse me, being a period of high uh, quake activity. They found that there had been periods of around five years when Earth's rotation slowed by such an amount several times over the past century and a half. Crucially, these periods were followed by periods where the numbers of intense earthquakes increased. It is straightforward, said Billum, the Earth is offering us a five-year heads up on future earthquakes. This link is particularly important because Earth's rotation began one of its periodic slowdowns four years ago. Billum said that this evidence is clear. Next year, we should see a significant increase in number of severe earthquakes. We have had it easy this year so far. With only about six severe earthquakes, we could easily have 20 a year starting in 2018. 
Now, we've had a rise in these quakes off and on back since the year 2000. And it seems like when you get up into the 8s and the 9s that we've seen Sumatra, Fukushima, things like that, that it relieves a lot of pressure. We haven't seen that so far this year. We've had strong 7s, but nothing past that point. It goes on to say exactly what decreases in day length should be linked to earthquakes is unclear, although scientists suspect the slight changes in the behavior of Earth's core could be causing the, co uh, the effects. That's what I'm saying. Magma, things like that. In addition, it is difficult to predict where these earth extra earthquakes will occur, although Billum said they found the most that most of the intense earthquakes that responded to the changes in day length seem to occur near the equator. About one billion people now live in the Earth's tropical regions. Now I've tied both of these together because each group of scientists always leaves out that the Earth and the Sun are so directly related that changes in the solar wind speed, coronal mass ejections, and solar flares can cause quakes. They never will mention that. And by, because of that, guys, they know they would have to write, rewrite the scientific textbooks, but because of that, they ignore that fact. Both the fact that the earthquakes come from the sun and the fact that the Earth's rotation slows down because of the sun's solar minimum, especially in these grand solar minimums that we're going through now that's going to lead us into a mini ice age. As I'll update this, it's a heads up. Be safe.